Welcome everyone to a new episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey everyone, welcome back, and thank you for joining me for yet another bonus episode here on The Dark Parade, uh, all about my love of found footage movies and an attempt to justify to myself, to loved ones, to family, why I watch so darn many of them. And, you know, look, we, we have delved into the, the bottom of the barrel in some cases with these found footage movies. Uh, but today is a little different. We are going to talk about something that is, uh, is actually an interesting conversation piece. It's uh, a movie from 2014 entitled Exists, uh, which is all about uh, Bigfoot, Big Feet, Sasquatches, Sasquatch Eye, uh, one of those, Boggy Creek people, uh, we call them here. Uh, this is directed by Eduardo Sanchez, which makes it all the more notable a movie because, of course, Eduardo Sanchez is the guy who directed uh, or co-directed the Blair Witch Project with uh, Daniel Myrick. So it's maybe one of the most credibly, uh, you know, created found footage films. Uh, 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 certainly has a pedigree. And would uh, would would suggest that like oh yeah this is probably going to be a cut above uh, the usual stuff that we talk about on this show, um, and and that I think is true. So let's get to the the plot out of the way. We'll we'll finish that uh, segment before we launch into our more scientific approach. But uh, at at any rate, the the movie itself is uh, about. A bunch of kids heading into the woods doing kid stuff in the woods. Uh, there's uh, one of the kids has an uncle who owns this hunting cabin. Then realized that the place is kind of ramshackle. Uh, the uncle has uh, abandoned the place for uh, some time. And anyway, they're going about their business of being young kids and partying and strapping GoPros to themselves and and doing bike tricks and swimming and that kind of thing. But on the way out there, as it happens. They hit an animal, unsure of exactly what it was, although we will learn pretty quickly it was a big feat that they they struck. And they are, in fairly short order, terrorized by said big feet uh, as a bit of revenge uh, for striking a, a young one. And th that is the thrust of the movie. It, the plot is not terribly complicated uh and i i think that is fine for a found footage film but a, a subjective read of this movie is not what we're here for we are here to apply some science and that science comes in the form of a a set of five criteria that we apply to these movies the official found footage full uh, list of five qualities all found footage movies should succeed in and let's begin with keeping the camera on and I would say this is largely successful because one of the guys in the the group of kids is sort of obsessed with getting all of their antics on camera and they all have mini cams and GoPros and all that kind of thing. There are still those moments in the movie where you wonder, you know, did we really need this kid to be wearing a GoPro when he's going you know, with a cell phone out into the middle of nowhere to try to contact help. Eh, perhaps not, but it's a, th a relatively thin justification, but the justification is there and I don't fault it too much for this. Although it is definitely strains credulity at times. Uh, so, you know, like I said, kind of a mixed bag there. Then we come to our second category, which is the characters. And the characters are generally pretty irritating, I found. Uh, I don't really like any of them. I Probably the closest that I get is Matt, who is uh, played by Chris Osborne. And he's a guy who is a big stoner and is the one setting up all the cameras everywhere and putting the GoPros together and that sort of thing. And he's likable enough, but everyone else is 
mostly just kind of snotty and screaming and I don't know. I didn't find any of them particularly interesting and I didn't really find myself rooting for any of them. And the problem with that, as we've discussed on this show before, is that at a certain point you just don't care whether these people live or die and you're just interested in whatever the monster or aliens or supernatural stuff is. And and, and to its credit, that is where exists sort of shines is in its presentation of the big feet and their activity and that stuff is really interesting but none of the kids are all that compelling i was really the biggest fan of aside from the character of brian his uncle who shows up uncle matt uh who shows up for like three seconds at the end of this movie i was like i'd like to know more about uncle matt who had this hunting cabin and then decided to leave it because he ran into some big feet and told his family about it and nobody believed him and everybody thought he was a crazy person or a drunk or something and i wanted more from that character i found that to be an interesting wrinkle uh as opposed to just a bunch of kids out for a party so that's a little bit of a bummer but then uh that brings us to our third category which is authenticity um, does all of this feel real within the context of the movie? And on that level, I would say that, yeah, for the most part, it does. I mean, putting aside the, why aren't you taking off this camera on your helmet, uh, so that you can concentrate on more important things, you know, it sets up a, an interesting world, uh, so to speak, it, you know, of this woods out in the middle of Texas, that uh is purported to have big feet in it and sure enough it does and we capture some of that and you know that stuff is all pretty believable like there is a good reason for these characters to be where they are the monsters are good monsters and so within the realm of the the world of this film yeah this is all authentic enough uh it is all explained enough and it also benefits from just decades and decades of Bigfoot lore uh, and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. So, authenticity, totally fine. Then we get to watchability. Uh, is the movie itself enjoyable to watch? And this is where things like characters that kind of stink uh, come back to bite you because I just didn't care. Like when, when the characters are sitting around arguing with one another about what their next move is going to be or sniping at each other or whatever... I couldn't care less. Don't care about any of that. The only time that I was really engaged with this movie is when Big Feet were on screen or we were talking about what the Big Feet were up to because that's what I cared about. That was That's what I was interested in. And that's unfortunate because I think if there were just a couple of characters that you gave a little bit of a razz ass about in this movie, it would be wholly successful. It would be a really good time. And as it happens, I don't know that it, it hangs together super well because the only thing you care about is the big feet. Which brings us to our fifth category. Let's, let's get this out of the way. Uh, which is the scares. Is it scary? And I don't know that I, I would call it scary in the way that, you know, this is going to give you a nightmare. It's like a paranormal activity or Blair Witch or something like that. That's a, a scare that will linger and it will fuck you up and you'll think about it for, you know, days and weeks after when you're lying in bed at night and the shadows fall just right across the wall and you think, oh, there's a Katie Featherstone in my house <laughs> or, or whatever. But this does have some good moments of tension. The monster stuff is really well done and, and really interesting. Shout out to Brian Steele who plays the monster in this movie as the Bigfoot and he's terrific. You know, it's, it's really physical. There's a great sequence where one of the kids uh, that I've mentioned before, who's going out on his bike to try to get some cell phone reception is being chased by one of these big feet in the woods. And it's running alongside the bike and kind of keeping pace with him. And it's a really good, scary, tense moment. And there was some other stuff. There was a, a great shot where, uh, a character is looking up through the the window of an RV and the Bigfoot just jumps down onto the RV and you see it, you know, coming coming right at you. 
and that is really good. It's a, a like the moment to moment stuff is is really good. Um, at the end of the day, is it a scare that's going to linger? Eh, probably not. It's not like a creeping dread sort of thing. But that's fine. This is a monster movie, and it had me uh, you know engaged when the big feet is on screen, and I thought all of that was a lot of fun. So I'm totally on board with this movie as a good creature feature. Um, the problem, though, is that like the, the movie attempts kind of a an ending that sort of suggests a theme of, like, you know, we just need to de-escalate if, if there were a way to apologize to those who had wronged us or something. Um, then, yeah, it seems a little highfalutin for this movie. And I don't know that it completely gets away with that sort of high-mindedness at the end of a movie that is largely a bunch of young, pretty people screaming and running. But that said, I still enjoy this movie well enough. I, I do think that Exists is a good found footage film. Uh, with the caveats of this has bad characters, um, you're not going to be rooting for them uh, per se, but in fact I was mostly rooting for the Bigfoot. Uh, which I don't know that that's where the movie wants my sympathy to lie, but maybe it does, given the end of this movie, perhaps. So, eh, you be the judge. But it's a good found footage film. If you've never seen Exists, I haven't spoiled it in a way that would detract from your enjoyment. I think you would still enjoy Exists a lot. It's a really fun movie. Uh, when, when Bigfoot is on screen. When Bigfoot is not on screen, it's less fun. But fortunately, this is one of those found footage movies that has enough of a budget and enough confidence in its creature design and, and its effects work and all of that to keep Bigfoot on the screen for a substantial period of time. And all of that works to the movie's favor. The last eh, 20, 30 minutes of this movie, totally good. Uh, really fun as the these kids are trying to figure out some way to survive their encounter with a Bigfoot. And you get a series of revelations about what the Bigfoot is and how it lives and, and that kind of thing. And that stuff is really interesting. Um, you know, the, the other Bigfoot movie I would recommend in the same breath, even though it's very different is Willow Creek. And that's a movie we'll probably get to on this show. And we'll talk about it in more depth there, but that is a movie that, uh, I find very compelling also even though it is very different from Exist. Exist is uh, much more of a creature feature, and Willow Creek is much more of a, like a weirdo take on found footage and creature features. It's not purely one or the other. Uh, so it, it, it's an interesting case, but we'll get to that on, at another time. But if you wanted to do a little bit of a, uh, a double feature on Bigfoot movies, uh, depending on what your taste is, I would probably say start with Willow Creek because that's a little more oddball of a film and then wrap it up with exists because uh it's got a pretty slam bang ending that will uh, leave you and your fellow viewers on the edge of your seats and uh chewing on the popcorn fast and furious which i think is kind of the point of a movie like this that um you know eduardo sanchez knows how to construct a found footage moment and this movie has some of those in it so it's a good time so uh big thumbs up or uh, a big thumbs up for the Bigfoot in Exist. Uh, more of a creaky hand on the characters of, of Exist. But it's still a good time. It's a fun movie. And so that will do it for uh, this here episode of Found Footage Full. And also this will do it for the month of May. Uh, we are just about done with this here month. So starting on June 1st, as a matter of fact you'll be getting the first of our Juniversal episodes in which we are going to do five, count them, five Universal uh, horror films. Some of them classic monsters. We're kicking off with The Wolfman with uh, Court Psyop. So uh, that's a, a good episode. You're really going to enjoy that one. And uh, yeah, all month long, we're going to be doing some of the Universal monsters and Universal horror films, not just the monster films, uh, but a lot of them. And uh, aside from that, we're also going to be doing, uh, th actually today was supposed to be a Heart of Horror, but we're going to end up kicking that till next week. You're going to get more what you're watching. You're going to get more found footage full. Uh, we're probably going to double up on Heart of Horror next month if, if all goes well. And uh, yeah, 
So all of that coming soon. And uh, thank you, uh, as always, for supporting the show. Uh, if you want to uh, engage with me and recommend a found footage movie or discuss what you have heard here, then you can go to uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash dark parade. And there you can uh, join the dark parade Facebook group, which is, you know, uh, just us yapping about some of the movies on, on uh, this year program, as well as other stuff, uh, some other silliness. You can also uh, find me on Twitter at dark parade pod. And I check Twitter about once a day, but don't hesitate to leave me a message there because I will absolutely get it. And then if you really want to engage with me on a way that I will see almost immediately and respond almost immediately, you can also do that over on our discord, uh, which you can find a link to that along with links to all the, the other social media outlets over on legionpodcasts.com forward slash the dash dark dash parade. Uh, and there you can find links to all the old episodes and all of that stuff. So I encourage you to check all that stuff out. And, uh, and, and like I said, thanks for supporting the show. Thanks for rating and reviewing where that's possible. Uh, as a wise woman once said, if, uh, if you enjoy the show, uh, you can help spread the word by telling anyone you can, any way you can, uh, about the dark parade. And, uh, we'll be back on Wednesday with the Wolfman with Quartz Iops. Until then, thank you as always for joining the dark parade. We'll see you soon. <laughs>